Hello there guys, I uh, just want to throw up a quick video about uh, my anchoring system. Um, if you watch some of the prior videos, uh, you'll see on the uh, fishing the bar, the reef, patch reefs. Um, I don't think I've done a channel fishing one yet or bridge fishing, but those as well. But um, down here in the Keys, um, the anchoring and chumming is one of the uh, most popular techniques. So it's just one of those kind of things that's a really beneficial to know how to kind of anchor up on your kayak and be able to do the similar type of fishing because it is very effective down here. Um, what I'll do is kind of go over on this first part is just the actual um, anchor setup and then I've got some videos that what you'll see is the um, see it in action uh, with a couple of different styles and then I'm also posted just kind of a on the shoreline on the boat ramp but just a, a, a layout with the kayak of everything just kind of in line so you can kind of get a general gist of how it flows out there but once you start watching the videos you'll kind of see it's a very simple setup um, the actual anchor system was created by a guy named Tote um, he was a member on my uh, old fishing forum which is ncka.org which is Nor Northern California Kayak Anglers excellent website great forum great people out there um, but he wanted to create an anchor system which was very safe, okay, um, which is very uh, uh, easy to, to assemble, okay, and easy to use, and pretty much uh, fairly inexpensive. So it just well-rounded, good setup. Um, it's posted as one of the main topics when you go into the website of just this is what you need to do this part of it if you're going to anchor. Um, I'll post a, a link to that article that he's written there and um, it's more of a uh, article layout so it's all written and then he's got photos so the theory part of it might be easier to, to see on his on his site there so I'll post that in the description but so let's go over kind of what the layout is um, the first part of it is basically the loop that will be sliding onto the the, the, um, the quick release line on the physical kayak and uh, the loop is attached with uh, started with uh, just a standard bungee. Um, originally, it was just a regular standard bungee cord that you just use for anything, strapping down stuff. But because of the sun and the salt, they just wore out so quickly. So I went to just a more of a heavy duty, just rubberized style. Um, what this is for is that when you're on anchor, um, this little bit will give flex. So as you might be hitting some wake or whatnot, this gives a little bit of a flex to the line, so you're not just directly connected to your kayak to the anchor there. Um, got that attached to a short strand here and all this does is is to give you a little bit of a leeway so when this is a slid back to the back of your kayak your bumper and the, the cords are set back away from the kayak so if you're swinging in the wind or whatnot there your float is not going to be uh, um, hitting the uh, the rudder on your kayak or getting tied up in the back and whatnot uh, after that we've got the bumper um, or this is a bumper but I'm using it as a float uh, this one's just an Atwood one I got at Walmart for like 15 bucks um, size wise what you're looking at is you just need something that keeps the the cord basically afloat your kayak system afloat your uh, anchor system afloat um, doesn't need to be overly large but the the reason why you have to kind of get a, a somewhat larger one is depending on the current and the amount of scope that you run because what happens is once you start getting in current um, the float will start getting pulled down with the line and you could possibly lose the float from being sucked under and you just can't reach it so you just have to wait until low tide basically and then it'll pop back up and then you can retrieve it but that's kind of a hassle so um, I use kind of a larger one because my origins are from the west coast fishing um, whitewater rivers uh, for salmon and steelhead to uh, the larger um, flowing rivers with a high volume for sturgeon and also in our bays over there we get a huge amount of water influx from the high tide to low tide so it's just like uh, the Bahia Honda and Seven Mile Bridge it's just huge volumes of water pushed out of there so you do need something a little bit larger. Um, if you're doing the bridge like that and you're having problems and you don't have a big enough one, what you can do is run two floats and one will keep it kind of up and then the second one will gently stay up and that's always an option. On the flip side, you don't have to go anything super expensive or super fancy. A milk jug will work fine. It's just something buoyant to keep the line up and if you're fishing in lake-like waters where it's not a lot of current, you really don't need anything very much. Um, if you uh, comb the shorelines, you'll find these just washed up and get them for free. Um, any of the boat stores, 
it's all in used equipment. We'll probably have a bunch of these, so that's another good place you can pick these up. Or West Marine if you want to play, get a brand new shiny one. Then I've got another short attachment, same thing, just to keep these from getting locked up together there, which comes up to the cord winder. Um, basically what these are, this orange thing is, is an extension cord winder. Um, you basically just wind up your extension cords and keep them neat and tidy. Um, I got this at the dollar store for a buck, but you can get them at Home Depot, same thing. Um, on it, I'm running, this is just some cheapo cord. Um, I think it's just a 90 pound all weather clothes, clothes hanging rope. It's not even that good kind of cordage. So anything will basically work. Don't need a lot of uh, hundreds and hundreds of pounds because you're really not, your kayak's not gonna be putting that much pressure on it. And the chance of you being able to break it if you got locked up, you're not gonna break 40, 50 pounds at, at most is best you can do. So. I got 90 pound, just totally sufficient. I don't want a large diameter, but then I don't want too small of it because you have to pull on it, and if it's too fine, you'll start digging into your hand. So something that you can grasp is good, and I just found this to be about right. Um, I'm running about 400 foot, well, it's actually probably around 350, 370, because I've had one cutoff on it, but um, I use uh, at the 100, 120 foot range, anchoring up on the bar, it's about 100, 120 foot deep. Uh, and you want to get a decent amount of scope, which is the angle there. Um, recommended for like on boater side is about seven to one scope. So basically how you figure out scope is the, the depth times seven would be how much anchor rope that you would want out. Okay. I think it's a little not as necessary to do the seven to one because we're using a kayak. Uh, boats sit in the water, so they're getting a lot more tension. Whereas with the kayak, we sit up on top and there's very little um, uh, drag caused by our kayaks. So I think we can kind of get away with it. So, so I stay within that three to five range is sufficient for what we do, okay? So when I've got 350, 400 foot out, I could go in 100 foot of water and I've got 3.5 to four scope. And I think I, I haven't had a problem with it. And uh, the other thing that I've done to even magnify that scope even more is by using the um, anchor chain. And the reason for the anchor chain is to alleviate the problems I was having when I was deep, uh, deep anchoring. And that was I was getting hung up a lot and then having to break or cut off the line to just free myself. What I kind of figured out and found out what the problem was is when you can tie your rope directly to your anchor, and 30 foot, 15, 20, whatever, works fine. I, don't, I wouldn't see the need for anything more than that. But if the problem that you run into when you just do rope to it, okay, that it doesn't allow the anchor to sit down with the nose down, and it doesn't allow the teeth or whatever to grab into the sand or the dirt or whatever rocks into the ground, basically. And it allows it to, with it being up, it allows it to slide. And then what happens is it gets wedged under things. And it'll just work itself farther and dig itself deeper and deeper to the point where you can't even lift it out. It's just locked in there. Then you're stuck. By using a chain, when I drop the anchor down, it drops. But so does this whatever pounds of chain drops down and it runs out. And it instantly will drag that nose down into the ground so that it is digging in right away. So when my anchor hits and the chain's down, it doesn't move. It just digs in a couple inches and it's stuck and it's not going anywhere and I don't have to worry about it running it into uh, rocks or reeds or whatever to, to lock itself up. And so that's kind of why I had the chain there and that's, that's alleviated all my problems with the anchors getting stuck. That and then the correct way of pulling the anchor up. Uh, so that's the importance of the chain. Like I said, it's you might not even have to, I think I've got six or seven foot of chain. You can probably go even just a little bit of a less. You could even attach weights to the ends of your anchor, the tips here, just to keep that nose down and it works fine as well. Um, then from there we go to the anchors. Um, I utilize two different styles of anchors and I recommend two different styles of anchors. One is this kind, which is a standard fold up claw style. Um, and the other kind is what they call as a Bruce style or a Bruce claw style anchor. It's basically got that reverse lip on it. And the only reason why I'm, I'm choosing those two or recommending those two is because they're both come with the breakaway attachments. Okay. What that is, is that you, when you tie your line to your anchor, you physically would tie it to the, the nose side of it, as you can see, which is opposite where you would think you would do it because it should dig in this way, not this way. 
But way you do it is you permanently attach it to the nose there, run your anchor line or your rope along the stem, and then you zip tie it or tie it with some light string, um, strong enough so it won't break on just normal handling, but it's weak enough so if you do get locked up and you can't pull it, you could when you pull on the rope really heavily, this is gonna snap, this chain is gonna come unwind, and you're gonna be pulling it out reverse wise, and it's gonna pull you out from whatever it's stuck under. Same thing with that claw one, it's just permanently stuck in, but if it breaks away, it'll pull out from the front, and then you'll unhook you, and that'll save your whole anchoring system. Get it back up, put on a new zip tie, and throw away your throw your anchor, and you're ready to go again. It's just that easy. So that's why I recommend those two. Weight wise, again, just depends. Um, I recommend going a bit heavier on the heavier side because I really want it to just drop, lock, and not move an inch because I don't want it to be digging in, and that's where you get into troubles. So that's kind of the, the anchor setup there. Um, outside of that, um, like I said, the future videos, I'll go over more explanations of it in actual use. But uh, beyond that, um, safety wise, okay, the three things on the safety part of it. Number one, carry a knife on you, on your PDF. Easily accessible knife. I have a bait knife I keep on the kayak, okay, so it's, it's there, okay. But keep one on you, so if something happens with all this ropes and anchors and lines and stuff and getting dragged around, you have the ability to pull that knife out, cut yourself free instantly, not getting sucked 10 feet under and trying to reach up to the water and you, for a knife that you can't reach. Okay, That's the, the number one key thing for this, this part of it. Um, number two is going to be the don't panic. Okay, don't don't force things when you're doing when you're anchoring. The key thing is don't force things. Be smooth or let it go. Okay, that's that's the easiest way to explain stuff. You're putting out your anchor. The wind blows you. All of a sudden, you're getting pulled perpendicular to the line. If you've ever anchored, that's kind of a nightmare there because then you're getting pulled sideways, and then the tension takes you, and then you're starting to rock, and then if you're not balanced, it could tip you over and turtle you. Okay. This is where the, the, if you start angling, okay, take this stuff, throw it overboard. Separate yourself from your, from your anchoring system. Don't worry about it, okay? And you'll see in the video, one of my techniques is exactly that, is just, I don't feel comfortable doing it all in one motion, or two, I'm doing it and things are not working smoothly and it's getting messed up. Don't worry about it, just throw it overboard, okay? It'll fix itself out in the water separate from you. Paddle back around and reset yourself and get it smooth, hook it up, and be done, okay? Don't fight things, okay? If, if things are choppy, you're anchored up, everything's good, boat comes by, kicks up wake, you're bouncing all around, holy crap, or some, the current starts taking off and you're starting pulling you around, you're getting scared, okay? Quick release anchor system, let it go, okay? Don't worry about it. Separate, separate yourself from the anchoring, You'll find that you're back on just an even plane of just on the on the water floating on your kayak. Okay, you might drift the wall back downstream a bit, but no worries. You get back, get your paddle, paddle back up to the anchor. You can either pick it up or go beyond it, circle around, reset yourself, and go back to fishing, no sweats. So that's a key thing, and just in the forefront of your mind, if things are not right, throw it overboard. Just separate yourself from the anchors and get back and you could fiddle with it and not be connected, get it straightened out, get the knots out, get, get it all aligned correctly, and then circle around and get reset up again. So just that part of it. And the step three is experience, okay? Practice this first before you start getting out distance-wise away from stuff. Do it right up from the shoreline in a foot of water, okay? A lot of this is, is just technique, okay? Do the, the things in a ritual-style manner Okay, when you unwind everything, how do the ropes go? When you unbuckle the, the, uh, the prongs on the, the anchor, where do you stash the anchor? Okay, where do you have the hoop so it's easy accessible? So when it comes to the time to slip it onto your quick release rope, where is it going to be attached to? Okay, where's that knife located at in case I have an emergency? It's just like loading and unloading your kayak from your vehicle. It's just if you have a routine, okay you're very efficient and uh, you don't miss things, you don't forget things, you don't do things incorrectly. It's just no different with the, 
the, the kayak anchoring system with that experience. Do it a few times, get that routine down so when you do it in two feet of water, it's not going to be any difference than you do it in 30 feet of water, okay? It won't be any difference than you do it if it's in fast current, slow current, whatnot. It's just, I do this, I do this, I throw it out, I put it there, I wait, I hanker it, boom, set, okay? And just get to that routine spot where you're just second nature, it's no big deal, things start messing up, you know, no big deal, I throw it overboard, I paddle, and so forth, okay? So that's my safety spill. So uh, watch the rest of the video. Again, click on that link below for the original version of there because uh, you can adapt it however you want to. It's not like anything in stone. And then I've got it set up on my Hobie, but I also have a, a Wilderness Systems Tarpon 140 where I've done a nice budget setup where no drilling holes necessary. Just got it clipped on the back uh, handle and a quick uh, zigzag which I prefer, but I couldn't mount that on my Hobie, so I didn't go that right, but you can check that out as well. Anyways, that's anchoring. See ya.